Okay, so what, uh, you know, I want to start uh, with sharing my uh, screen, um, note uh, the uh, lovely um, light uh, evergreen uh, background uh, color. Um, I've bumped up uh, the font size on my terminal window. Um, if uh, anybody um, is uh, having any uh, difficulty reading it, um, please uh, let me know, uh, and I'm uh, happy uh, to uh, tweak uh, color settings. All right, um, so what we're working on is um, my primary uh, development uh, you know, work uh, station, uh, or FEM. Uh, in this case, um, and we're at the right now sitting at the tip of uh, the uh, main uh, branch. Um, so, even though we're working uh, to release um, three nine uh, one, um, you know, ultimately there will be uh, several things that end up uh, getting uh, either done in uh, the master branch uh, or uh, ported uh, to it. All right, so. The first thing uh, I'm going to do uh, is to uh, start uh, taking uh, a look uh, at one of uh, the uh, outstanding uh, evergreen translation issues, um, specifically with uh, the changeover uh, in Angular versions, um, the Czech uh, translation um, stopped building uh, correctly. Um, so. Yeah, you know, that's obviously something that's critical to uh, put it uh, put back uh, in place. Uh, and I should say the check uh, translation uh, for the uh, anchor interface in that particular. So off screen, I'm going to go find uh, the relevant bug. So one moment. All right, so. The bug in question when I need to a date uh, seven, um, which has uh, a patch uh, courtesy of um, Jason uh, Boyer, um, but uh, we're also noting that um, we'll need uh, to um, potentially deal with uh, a trade off uh, for uh, the release. But anyway, let's go ahead uh, and uh, grab uh, this patch. Uh, and by the way, um, you know, if you have any uh, questions about uh, it as I proceed, yeah, I do uh, feel uh, free to uh, go forth uh, and uh, ask uh, questions. But anyway, um, we have the branch for it, and since um, you know, master and uh, rel three nine are close enough uh, for the purpose, uh, my starting point will be cherry picking uh, from uh, into master. Um, one thing to note, by the way, um, the command I'm using tig t i g. Uh, is uh, a uh, in courses uh, based uh, visualizer uh, for Git. Um, so uh, I find it uh, handy uh, as an alternative uh, to uh, just using uh, Git uh, log. Um, so we can go ahead uh, and put this in place. Um, we know from the bug um, that uh, Linda had uh, signed off. So I'm going to go ahead and manually uh, capture that. Okay. All right, so go ahead and grab uh, this uh, for the sign off and uh, admit. Uh, and amend uh, the commit. All right. 
So then now that uh, we um, have uh, this uh, in place, it's time to go forth and test. Um, so I'm just verifying that I don't have uh, a screen session in place. Um, and now we can uh, go ahead uh, and double check. Yes, uh, and and that's my build, and yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I do see that uh, there's um, an issue with um, it uh, expecting uh, a particular lo uh, sub locale, um, but uh, I think uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, ignore this. So for now, and just um, double check uh, how well uh, the build uh, um, proceeds. Yeah, and I'm also noting uh, the deprecation uh, alert. And meanwhile, while we're waiting for uh, the build uh, to proceed, I'm going to go ahead and get the, you know, a browser uh, set up ready to uh, drag over. And yes, uh, I also recognize uh, that uh, the build time is uh, in a direct uh, proportion uh, to uh, the number of uh, people watching. Um, and yeah, we're also noting uh, a bunch of that of translations that will need to, to be supplied. Um, but anyway, um, we have uh, a uh, build and I've brought over the browser. And uh, at this point, uh, you may be uh, asking uh, yourself, oh, how is this actually working? Uh, the only thing I saw was doing the Angular build. Um, how's it uh, showing up? Um, and the reason is um, because on my uh, development uh, environment, I have a uh, symbolic link uh, from uh, the Angular build uh, directory uh, to, or build results uh, directory uh, to, um, uh, open iOS uh, var web uh, eg2. All right, so we note um, as a result of this uh, patch that okay, it's complaining about untranslated uh, strings, but we kind of expect uh, kind of expect that, um, and that it's um, building in uh, the uh, option to um, put in uh, the uh, translation. Um, but actually switching to check uh, doesn't work. So let me first uh, check uh, something. Okay. Um, all right, so it is. I mean, uh, to have built it and it's showing up. Let me go double check my Apache config. Uh, 
Let's go check out the Apache log. And by the way, if um, it's obvious uh, to you what's uh, broken, you know, uh, please uh, do feel uh, free to uh, pipe up. I see what's happening, Galen. Okay. Uh, at the bottom of the AGV host config, there's the directory open ILS var web eg2 in us mm -hmm. stanza. Uh, apparently, I've got that duplicated for check in my config and did not check that in. Uh, sort oh, of okay. like how the, the France was. Oh, right, French right, 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 right. All right. Although, I guess if it's going to be built by default, maybe it needs to be available. <laughs> So mm -hmm. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. And I think this is, you know, definitely, you know, hitting uh, one of the, the trade-offs um, since um, at the moment the uh, Anchor um, staff uh, interface is pulling in off uh, the uh, available uh, locales. Um, It's also possible that there's a better way to specify the fallback more generically, yeah. but I haven't looked into that. All right, so if I made that change, um, let's see if it's enough. All right, so now let me try switching back to track. Um, Okay, and we find a whole lot of um, stuff that does not uh, remotely check. Yeah, I mentioned it in chat also. I think the in tree translations are super old mm -hmm. because the export from Poe Editor may or may not have been done consistently in the past for the Angular client. Okay. Um, so were there any parts of this interface where you were actually seeing any part of the translation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the only way I could tell it was doing anything. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. After, well, I did download the updates as part of the build. So mm -hmm. from Poe Editor. Okay. Yeah, that, that actually still uh, confuses me since um, there should uh, still be uh, at least uh, some uh, strings, you know, even in very old uh, builds. All it's right. also possible that the export sets the locale specifically to cs-cz, which is what the build was looking for. I don't recall having to do anything special other than that. All right, source locale messages. Okay. All right, well, so I'm going to go ahead and um, bring up a uh, Pell editor and See if a fresh uh, export helps uh, at all. So I've got that, and I'm going to go ahead and upload it.
All right. Um, so now that we've uploaded it, let's get a sense of uh, the differences. Okay. So, yeah, of course, certainly seen changes, uh, but nothing. Okay, not as many as I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and All right, so we'll go ahead and try rebuilding the configuration. So while we're waiting, uh, Jason, are there any other missing uh, configuration bits uh, that occurred out to you? Not that I can think of. Um, I, I'm actually rebuilding the local branch on my dev server <laughs> to make sure I haven't missed something. Um, one thing I did notice, uh, the page you've got up currently isn't going to look any different no matter what, since it's only the... Oh, well, the I... Yeah, let's see. Good point. It would uh, be, yeah, helpful to look at, uh, at the uh, uh, an actual uh, EG2 interface for this. Okay, and it ran off of memory, so let's try this again. Yeah, it's been long enough. I don't recall if I had to restart Apache or anything special. Shouldn't have to touch services, but. Yeah, no, in that case, it was just um, getting some memory uh, feed up. Mm. So we've uh, built uh, the application. Now we're doing this uh, the localization. All right. All right, so let's start up services again.
All right. Okay, so having done that, let's go ahead and switch over back to the track. Okay, and still. I've not have seen anything of uh, reflecting uh, the translation. Linda mentioned in chat that it sometimes will just automatically work if you switch to check in the OPAC first, but I'm not sure that the system is ready to do that. I don't know if it's uh, configured or if that's another change. All right, well, we can go ahead and try the OPAC first, see if it helps us out there. Okay, let me try one thing behind the scenes. Okay, just wanted to there. Um, and yeah, to your point, Jason, uh, Stephenson, um, uh, uh, the way it's uh, running uh, is without cash. Um, and Blake, uh, the bootstrap uh, OPAC uh, isn't uh, the turning on the translation uh, for the bootstrap OPAC uh, wouldn't affect uh, the Angular client. Okay, um, Jason Boyer. Ah, uh, I, I okay. did finally track it down. There are two things that have to be changed uh, in relation to this. And they're not anywhere near each other. It's, okay. Well, maybe they're not too far away. So back in the EGV host, uh, around line 758. <sighs> and let's see. Uh, that might be a different. Oh, yeah. Well, if, if you just search for uh, rewrite cond and 
that. No, that's never mind. That's too generic. Um, if you just search for caret slash eg2 slash, that should get you to the right thing. Yeah, that uh, French example. Oh, all right, messy. Yeah, so there's two chunks that have to be included for this to work. Because the, for the, uh, to tell everyone else what's going on, that uh, English section below will take any uh, locale and just make it English since it's uh, the default and very loosely specified. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's wait to shoot to do it. So let's keep our fingers so closed. All right, okay, okay. So this is uh, now looking much better. So, um, okay. Now, yeah, we also, in this case, so for 310 uh, ish, you know, have issues uh, around um, uh, uh, a large number of uh, untranslated uh, strings, but we can go ahead uh, and deal with that. All right, so at this point, you know, we've identified uh, two pieces of uh, configuration that need uh, to be uh, dealt with uh, in order to get it uh, set up. Um, but we do also, you know, have uh, the consideration that um, You know, because of the current way that uh, the uh, Angular uh, locale system is uh, expecting uh, the set of uh, locales that we hard coded in the build, which isn't necessarily a problem uh, per se, uh, but does run into the issue that that's that the hard coded list of all uh, available localizations is what the drop down that menu uh, in. The evergreen stuff interface is offering. Um, you know, I think um, what we you know have uh, here um, is uh, a bit of a dilemma. Um, you know, since by a default, uh, without changing anything whatsoever, um, the dropdown which up in the Angular stuff client, uh, whether you like it or not. Um, but if you try doing that uh, without the configuration, switching to check, um, you know, just outright, uh, you know, it breaks uh, things. Um, so with that, I'm going to go take a quick look at uh, the patch. Right. Um, so I think at the moment, uh, what I'm inclined to suggest that we do is uh, under environment.prod.ts uh, 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 um, to set the um, locale, uh, list of uh, locales back to ENUS, um, meaning that when you're building the uh, application, uh, you need to you know, add uh, additional languages back. Um, so I think a uh, question for you, Linda, um, when you uh, up deploy Evergreen, are you always, uh, you know, figuring that uh, you're going to be rebuilding Angular?
Okay. All right. Well, yeah, then I think uh, in that case, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, not really great, but, you know, we're at the point uh, where we can say if you need to, um, you know, turn on uh, this, you know, localization, you know, here's a, uh, here's a one line change that you can make uh, to this particular file uh, and then uh, deploy it. Um, so commentary on this approach, uh, just to uh, at least get us uh, to uh, the point uh, where uh, we can have it just work. Uh, yeah, I'll have it uh, with one more step uh, for uh, the um, people using uh, the Jack uh, localization. Uh, and also while people are pondering that uh, question, um, Jason Boyer, was that the primary thing um, that you had in mind? You know, I'm conscious of uh, the question that uh, Taryn uh, had left uh, that you'd uh, identified um, some you know, other issues uh, in that discussion with this particular patch. Uh, most of the other issues, I, I don't have it up in front of me right now. Let me click the link. <laughs> Uh, I think the primary issue was that we can't easily um, change the drop down if we don't want everything localized. Let's see what else. Yeah, I mean, editing environment.prod.ts was my primary issue with it because you can always just pass localize equals false um, when you're building it for your dev systems if you're that worried about the speed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and of course, making sure that the release instructions got uh, the Poe editor stuff added, which by the point I wrote that comment, they were actually already in the list. I just forgotten to look at it. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, one thing I'll mention about uh, the language uh, selector uh, is that it isn't directly an Angular thing uh, that that's where it's grabbing its list of locales. Um, that was you know a specific uh, choice. Uh, in the uh, evergreen uh, nav uh, barcode. Um, so, uh, you know, the web product, I think, is it's possible to make it um, be uh, more dynamic uh, or rather make it uh, refer to, you know, of uh, the other things uh, that it should be looking at uh, to see if a localization is actually meant to be enabled. Um, Though, as speaking of which, I think, um, you know, we might want to consider um, some work uh, to basically explicitly say uh, for each local cow, uh, do you want it uh, enabled and in which uh, interfaces. But okay, um, I think we're at the point um, where we can say uh, sufficient onto the day and move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. So we'll define it back to just English.
right, so I'll go ahead and add a verbose uh, comment um, and go ahead uh, and add a phone log by patch. I mean, whoops, actually, let me quit. I didn't mean to just up and include uh, those localizations, at least not by themselves. So. Right. Um, by the way, uh, I do uh, want to thank you all for uh, bearing with me on what's kind of a super uh, unorganized uh, presentation. All right. Uh, and then having that, um, I will also uh, go ahead and, you know, since we basically have that on it, um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm checking uh, the uh, most recent uh, set of uh, track uh, strings. Uh, and actually, I'm going to go just do a fresh upload uh, to make sure it's identical. All right. All right, um, so with this, I'm gonna go ahead and push uh, before I can cause uh, any more damage here. All right, so we have um, this change um, in master, and since it's something that's effectively uh, a release issue for RHEL 3.9, going to go ahead and start working in RHEL 3.9 again. Okay, um, so, you know, at this point, uh, we, you know, have various fixes um, in place. So now it's time to go use uh, take to cherry pick. So we're picking from the master branch. We we'll take this, merge this cleanly, takes this, it merges cleanly. And now we'll try our experiment. All right, and that merges it cleanly as well. Um, so, okay, that 
uh, goes ahead uh, and uh, deals uh, with that. So the next uh, thing I'm going to do is you get to see me in the tremendously exciting uh, process of responding to a bug. Uh, All right, so we're noting this as something to that we've now fixed a committed and uh, we'll get this off my list. And uh, that uh, puts it uh, in the realm of we've now got uh, a set of fix uh, committed uh, bugs. All right, um, so with that, um, we know that uh, we'll have um, some work uh, to do, but you know, uh, at this point, um, what I'm going to do next is uh, some smoke uh, testing uh, in the uh, RHEL 39 uh, branch. So, well, yeah, we'll start first uh, with a rebuild and reconfiguration. All right, so let's go ahead and run a couple of further tracks. So we'll first do a make a track at the top level. All right, so that passes. Now we'll move on to ED2 and try testing that there. Now I have only one of the two browsers, uh, yeah, had this uh, browsers uh, set up, so one of them it will fail, but that's okay. Uh, I'm at this point, just checking uh, that uh, the other uh, one works. So, yep, uh, this particular dev box has Firefox, uh, but not uh, Chrome headless. All right, and now it's going to do its thing. All right, and the bit I'm highlighting here is the success condition in this case. Um, you know, the errors here are just complaining that um, Chrome headless isn't there, but we knew that already. And now let's go ahead and see what Lint um, says for Route 
All right. Okay. And so what do we have? Okay. Um, so Okay, yeah, so we had a patch uh, that was uh, applied uh, a while back. So, yeah, I mean, not uh, ideal to um, have um, leftover land, uh, and it is something that uh, needs to be cleaned up. Um, but in this case, uh, it uh, isn't um, a showstopper for the release. So, consequently, I'm not going to let it. Uh, uh, be a, a stopper. Okay, so having did, uh, done that, let's uh, go forth and check something else. Uh, and try it on the uh, Angular uh, JS uh, side. Okay. Um, and so in this case, um, uh, we do uh, have uh, a bunch uh, of uh, errors, uh, in this case, uh, relating to one particular component. Um, but uh, but I think uh, this is also a relatively old one. Uh, I think this has actually been a problem for a while. But I anyway, let me go quickly see if um, I can find anything about it. So let's go ahead and look at uh, the... Okay. okay. All right, so... Right, so I think this is related to the client side caching change uh, that was added. That was drafted in 2019. And also, and committed in April for 2020. All right, so actually just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna see if this clearly now it Okay, too much is uh, depending out there. And actually, actually double check that the build is up to date. All right. Um, 
it's a complaining uh, quick hospital yeah, because love field is not something that uh, would work at all in the particular test environment. All right, so uh, again, in this case, not uh, ideal, but since we know that this has uh, been an issue that's um, been uh, present for a while and quite possibly going back uh, to RHEL 3.8, uh, we're going to mark this uh, and move on. All right, so we have uh, a um, set of um, fixes uh, that will make up our release. Let's go ahead and check uh, the state of uh, the release notes. All right. Okay, so uh, I know that uh, there have there been already uh, notes underway. Let me if uh, they were maybe not done in master. Okay. No, it doesn't look like it. Um, does anybody know offhand uh, where the draft uh, work uh, was being done for the 391 of these notes? Ask somebody via another channel. Okay, bear with me. Have another couple of moments. Ah, there we are. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, so um, yeah, I'm going to pop that back go to your master for this one and uh, apply the draft. All right. Okay, so we now have uh, those over these notes. And I'm going to go take a, a quick look. All right, so that looks so straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm 
I deal with uh, any that uh, may have been added since uh, then. All right, so that should be good enough. All right, so let's go forth and uh, compare. All right, so, okay, uh, I've uh, identified, uh, I think, uh, the primary point uh, where things uh, need to be updated. So go forth and I do that. Next one up is a course of reserves.
All right, so it is effectively part of an omnibus epoch, so I'm just going to do it for the omnibus. Okay. So we'll run with that for now. Let's go on to your next one. All right, so we're fixing. Build issue. So let's see. All right, we'll just toss it under. Okay. All right, of course, reserves one. And we're almost out there. Okay, so that's uh, the last of them.
All right, so we have that. I'm going to go copy this. Okay, I'm going to drop now to rel three line. Go ahead and cherry pick. Okay. Um, so at this point, uh, we're now, now up to your date uh, with respect to uh, release notes. So we'll um, push uh, those out. Um, so now it's uh, time uh, to uh, get much closer to actually uh, starting uh, to build um, the tarball. So we'll go ahead and get to started with that. All right, so next. Uh, no. Now, next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll start dealing with uh, translations uh, and string exporting, um, beginning with um, uh, exporting uh, the strings. So we'll run npm run export strings. All right, so we've got that. So we should now have messages so export. And okay, we don't. Oh, okay. So let's take a look at this. Okay, seems reasonable. And I need to go update to the wiki page. So give me a moment to do that. Open source G2 cow. All right, so we'll jump over to PO uh, editor and upload uh, this file. So we'll do an import, um, so that the messages, uh, XMB, uh, we're importing tools only, or terms only. And now we should uh, go ahead and add uh, a tag, a couple of tags. So one of them is in RHEL 3.9. Um, to overlay. And then in the new tag rel three nine one, we're 
only interested in, or we're primarily interested in the new ones. So we'll go ahead and import the file. Okay, we're done. Um, we'll not, uh, not forget about uh, this and go to the terms list. And let's go ahead and All right, filter for all the L391s. Well, okay, so that's, that's addressing that there aren't any, that aren't any new terms in well, three, nine, which I don't actually believe. Oh, okay. Actually, it's possible that uh, all of the what uh, of the new ones may have been, you know, dealt with uh, when the uh, three ten beta was the strings were uploaded. So, uh, okay. So we'll uh, just uh, move there. So um, those the strings are in place uh, for uh, further uploading uh, for further translation week. Uh, work. Um, we've already fetched uh, the uh, current set of uh, strings. Um, so uh, I think uh, we're good uh, there. So having done that, uh, we'll go forth um, and start looking at uh, the other side of uh, translations. And well, I double check or something. On the bizarre side, I'm going to go ahead and pull here. All right, so we have a set there. Okay, All right, so. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set up a, um, a translation uh, branch for RHEL 3.9. And 
den hissingen chat uh, the instructions I'm following here. Except now that's actually for the uh, entirety of the Okay, and Would you mind explaining the overall idea here? Right. So um, what's going on is um, a good chunk of um, everything that isn't uh, Angular um, is getting translated uh, through Launchpad, uh, which uses um, a set of um, bizarre repositories uh, to store artifacts, uh, including uh, the translations. So in this case, uh, and this is something that hasn't been done for a while, but uh, we're now experimenting. I'm going ahead and uh, registering RHEL 3.9 as 
you know, a target for translations uh, in a form recognized at a launchpad. So the notion is we take uh, the Git repository, map it uh, to uh, Bazaar, and push it uh, to Launchpad. Uh, and then, you know, Launchpad has uh, some magic uh, to, um, you know, recognize uh, the strings uh, and pull them in. Now, um, this is overall something that has a bit of a documentation uh, in the um, uh, wiki, but not a ton. Um, and uh, it looks like it's something where there's been really uh, a bit uh, of um, confusion uh, about, you know, what's needed to, to keep it up uh, to date. Um, that said, uh, I'm also kind of reconsidering and thinking from for the purpose of getting a, uh, a release, um, you know, we'll probably just uh, build uh, translations against uh, the current uh, master uh, and sort it out uh, later. So I think what I'm actually going to do is just cancel that. and deal with that later, so. Okay, um, so we're now at uh, a point uh, where we can um, start um, uh, dealing with um, strings, so. One of these uh, is um, a standard dust uh, step, so I'm fine from the public key. We'll run make new part. Oh, and we need to, to add uh, some dependencies. Okay, so buster. So let's install the translation and stuff. All right, so now at this point, uh, we're extracting strings. And we have a formula to go ahead and add. And... All right, so. Yeah, so that's saying, okay, yeah, we see updated uh, strings so like that. All right, and uh, I had already um, up, you know, updated uh, the uh, BCR checkout. So at this point, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, start uh, the actual release of uh, Branch, so row three, nine, one, and actually, 
indictment tags route 391. And we'll go ahead and update the EPO files from available translations. And let's see what we have. Okay, and so what we have is a you know, handful of uh, Czech uh, translations, which is kind of what uh, we would expect. And we've uh, already uh, updated uh, the uh, anchor uh, ones. Okay. Um, so at this point, uh, we can start uh, with um, a bit of a uh, dry run of make of release. All right, so we're not building uh, the Mzilwa client. Um, the open Atlas JavaScript is uh, there. We are building um, the Uh, the client, uh, uh, the browser client um, version of this will be 391 against origin tags for L390. And one of the key things uh, there is um, having it uh, go ahead and uh, start automatically, uh, start an auto uh, build of uh, the schema release. Uh, a schema update uh, script uh, that uh, will uh, in turn make use of, uh, you know, fix and uh, make use of. Oh. Okay, and uh, we have a bit of uh, noise, but that's okay, we're not yet uh, doing this uh, for real. And actually, that's really good enough since it's gone ahead and created the one thing I was really interested in. So, and that's, and this is uh, the one I want to check. All right, so let's just say config update. All right. A, change of a stored procedure, dropping a role and creating it, more seed data. Add in the column. Sim spell stuff. Change to the readdressed. All right, so, okay, that uh, is all uh, fine. It's taking care of that, bumping up uh, the version numbers uh, for us. Okay, um, so so far uh, so uh, good. Um, so with that, I'm good to go fix uh, permissions. In this case, we're only building, so we'll go ahead and let it uh, do its own thing. All 
All right, and the internationalization I'm building is something that uh, can take a little while to run. Um, by the way, um, is there anybody in a position to um, do, uh, you know, a test installation from uh, the new tarball, uh, or to, um, you know, try and upgrade uh, from a stock uh, three nine zero uh, system? Sure. Okay. All right, then what I'm going to do is uh, take uh, the process to uh, the point uh, where I'm uh, uploading uh, the files, but not, um, you know, changing, uh, you know, changing the active for these notes or updating uh, the downloads uh, page. So in the future, for the PO editor, do we need to rely on a community member with the PO editor account to populate the branch ahead of time, uh, you know, ahead of cut? Like, I think what's basically what apparently happened here is what is that was the case. Right. So um, I think uh, what we probably should be doing uh, is something closer to, um, you know, uh, ideally, you know, freezing for bug fixes, um, pushing, you know, changes out to PO editor uh, and allowing some time, uh, maybe uh, just a, you know, week uh, for translations uh, and then pulling them in uh, before building uh, the tarball. Uh, and yeah, I think at the moment, uh, you know, it would be a matter of um, people with accounts, uh, though, as far as I can tell, uh, there's nothing really stopping several uh, people uh, from having accounts. Um, you know, you know and the ability to do uploads uh, to the same uh, project. I don't really know how PO editor works, but you're alluding to some things that I might make some statements to see if they're true or not. So there mm -hmm. is this PO editor project called Evergreen ILS, and mm -hmm. there's this notion of sharing that with or allowing other people's accounts to have access to said project in, within PO editor. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. Um... And I just uh, looked, uh, and it also has uh, an API. Um, so that also gives us uh, the possibility to um, do a bit of automation of the strictly a routine uh, piece of uh, saying, you know, you know, every time I commit uh, or add it to a release uh, branch, uh, or at least, you know, every time that uh, there's some you know, daily or whatever makes uh, sense, uh, automatically uh, push uh, an import, uh, you know, uh, an export uh, strings uh, to it. Uh, and then that way, um, what the actual people doing the translations uh, would be doing is just saying, okay, hey, there's uh, new strings, let's go forth and translate. Um, and I think the same API looks like could be used uh, to grab, automatically grab uh, the XATB files as well. So yeah, I mean, I think Upshot uh, is, um, there's some ways to get a good chunk of uh, this uh, built into uh, the release uh, scripts. Yeah, with uh, the only, um, 
particular, you know, the significant issue is figuring out a way to um, track uh, the API keys, um, you know, and you know, and avoid, of course, having them accidentally get uh, checked into any uh, public repository. Um, but, you know, certainly on the string export side, uh, that I think it's something where we could safely have a dedicated uh, box uh, that mostly just uh, does nothing uh, except um, periodically export uh, strings. So does that uh, make sense, uh, at least more or less? Yeah, and these wiki pages here, I think I have seen these before, but it's, I'd forgotten they existed. These are helpful. And Jason Stevenson asked how to get added to other languages. If you click the um, join evergreen on PO editor link in that wiki page that I posted, you can just check them all or check all of them that you can read anyway, and then click the join translation button. So I think you can do that at any time to add more languages later. All right. Um, so, you know, at long last, uh, what uh, we have um, is you know, historical stuff, uh, but at the very end, uh, a tarball. Um, and yeah, at the moment, um, something that's uh, in the um, 70 um, uh, or so. Uh, megabyte uh, you know, size uh, is in fact uh, exactly uh, what uh, we're looking uh, for. Okay, so having uh, made this at Harbaugh, what I'm going to do next is expand it uh, because uh, there's uh, a couple bits uh, for the release notes um, building that. Um, You know, uh, require use of the ASCII uh, dog uh, command. So, hey! it's like a directory to move all this uh, stuff. Oh, okay, so you're doing that within the expanded folder. Yeah, or, or rather, I'm grabbing the stuff out of uh, that expanded uh, folder. That's be dark.
All right, and that also happily uh, states that uh, we haven't had uh, any issues, syntax errors uh, building those. All right, so now we have uh, the set of uh, things uh, to upload. So in a separate uh, window, I'm going to go deal with that. Just a moment. Okay, so now we uh, have uh, our things. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, <coughs> get uh, the base files in place. All right. Um, all right. So the stuff uh, that go goes in the downloads, so uh, you know, file is straightforward enough. Um, let's. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and copy the base of these, uh, you know, install instructions, but not. And we can update uh, the uh, symbolic uh, link uh, later when uh, we're ready. All right, so um, I think at this point, um, the 391 release is um, uh, available for download uh, for anybody uh, who wants uh, to test. Um, so I think we had uh, one volunteer uh, you know, uh, so far. Yeah, I'll take a look. Okay. All right, then I'll uh, just uh, keep uh, word up, uh, keep an eye open uh, whether um, it works or if uh, there's uh, any uh, issues uh, that uh, we need uh, to keep an eye on. Um, I'm also separately going to uh, do uh, a dry run uh, myself, um, both with the insulation and uh, uh, with an upgrade from 390. But basically at, this, uh, at that point, um, you know, 
uh, to sum up uh, what uh, we you know have got, uh, gone through in kind of uh, the messy uh, way in so the process of um, getting a uh, these tarball put uh, together and as you can see there's uh, plenty of uh, opportunity for more fixes uh, and documentation um, as well as uh, improved handling of uh, how the translations uh, got uh, dealt with so it, this has been quite a lot, um, but um, what questions uh, do people have? I had some questions kind of bumbling around. Mm -hmm. So we have this XTB file that gets exported, and then we send that out to PO Editor. And then PO Editor re responds back with an XT. Shoot, I have my notes here. And another file. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh -huh. the XM. Yeah, you know, the XMB file is uh, saying here's all of the possible uh, strings uh, in the Anchor application that can be translated. Um, it gets loaded into PO editor, uh, and then the humans are doing the actual translations, uh, supply them, uh, and then the result is uh, the XATB uh, file that has uh, the translations uh, and is what Anchor knows uh, how to. Um, you know, uh, inject uh, and uh, display in uh, the application. Ah, okay. So the humans doing the translations by and large do all their work on the PO Editor uh, web app, I suppose. Yeah, no. And they're, and they're prompted the stuff from our exported file, um, the untranslated stuff would presumably be prompted <coughs> there. Yeah, but that's uh, one of the reasons um, why uh, I'd added uh, tags uh, when I did uh, the import of the XMP file, um, because um, the tags are a way of saying that, oh, I, you know, I, I want to work on, say, strings that were only added in 390 or whatever, uh, as opposed to working on every single last uh, you know, a string in uh, the project, you know, some, some of which may no longer be relevant. Um, and that's because um, you know, the PL editor project as a whole uh, is kind of pulling in all of uh, the, uh, you know, all of the uh, strings uh, from every uh, release branch uh, that we're pushing out to it. Okay. And that's all strictly the Angular stuff, the new stuff, the EG2 stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have separately a different mechanism for the rest of Evergreen using Launchpad's mechanism. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it centralizes on Launchpad as where you, uh, where the human translators enter the strings. Um, but that's where, um, yeah, you, know, you have the additional code under build uh, i18n to pull strings uh, from the template uh, toolkit uh, stuff. Uh, everything you know tagged uh, with the L function, uh, as well as um, strings that are tagged uh, from uh, the IDL. Uh, you know, strings uh, that are tagged uh, from uh, the database uh, scripts, uh, and so on. So uh, there's quite a lot that's uh, flowing through Launchpad. Um, and, you know, one thing to keep in mind is there isn't necessarily anything all that special about Launchpad. Um, you know, uh, you know, there's, you know, you know, even if uh, we continue using Launchpad uh, for bug reporting uh, for the foreseeable future, um, there's nothing saying that the translations also have to take place in Launchpad. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know there's a variety of other tools like, say, Poodle uh, that uh, could be used. Uh, but, um, you know, 
I also don't uh, particularly have uh, any insight as to um, what um, you know better serves uh, you know people as a comparative launchpad. But you know the upshot changing the tools, um, you know, if it would benefit the translators, you know, is definitely an option. Um, from Evergreen's uh, point of view, for the non-hacker stuff, um, the technical requirement is that it just uh, be able to deal with PO and PLT uh, files. Okay. And there's a step here where we export to PO editor, but in the case of um, Launchpad, there is no export because Launchpad presumably is just sort of looking at master and riffing on, like you said, those L things and... Yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah, it's not, uh, but that's actually something that uh, we'll need to, to uh, check in um, because, um, you know, I, I think it's also the case uh, that uh, there might be a manual a step or two that uh, we need to, to be doing uh, more frequently. <coughs> um, so, and, Yeah, uh, and actually, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, what it may uh, specifically be doing is relying on the make a uh, new part, uh, you know, step. Um, uh, and I think, uh, though I'm not positive, uh, that that's uh, what Launchpad is relying on, uh, any PLT uh, files uh, that it uh, finds uh, in uh, the uh, source uh, tree. Uh, so make make POT is ran and then checked into master, uh, re you know, theoretically, regularly? <laughs> yeah, well, checked into master uh, and also checked into um, the bizarre branch per evergreen release uh, branch uh, that looks like needs uh, to be there. Um, and the translations flow into the translator export um, repository. Um, so uh, I think there's a connection there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure uh, how Notchpad uh, makes it, uh, however. Yeah. Well, I know it's possible to mess with it because some years ago we needed to use a different version of translator export for like Evergreen 3.2. There was mm. a there was a switch, we, you know, we needed to use. So we're yeah. not doing that anymore. I think now we're just using standard translator dash export. Yeah, yeah, uh, we are. Uh, but I think uh, the difference is that. Um, you know, we can and should be making uh, more use of branches in that repository to say, you know, if you want a string set for 310 or 39, um, you're switching to that particular branch in uh, the translation translator export uh, repo before fetching them into the build process. Um, now I think one thing I just remembered about Launchpad that I think is also relevant um, is if I remember correctly, um, Launchpad will supply um, uh, suggestions from every single translation uh, project uh, in off Launchpad, um, not just Evergreen. Um, so that's something that um, could be, uh, I, I think, both beneficial uh, by saving time, um, but you know, potentially has uh, the uh, but potentially isn't going to be 100% accurate, um, particularly around anything that's uh, library jargon or where uh, a library catalog is using a given word uh, in a slightly uh, different way uh, from most applications. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I understand it better than I did before. <laughs> All right, um, question from Michelle, uh, when will this uh, recording be uh, available? Um, 
uh, I'll work uh, with, I think, Rogan to try to get it to, to the YouTube uh, channel as soon as possible. Um, and the recording itself is uh, being saved uh, to the Evergreen Project's Zoom account. Um, so uh, there might be uh, some access uh, to it even before the upload to YouTube. And I would uh, say, uh, whatever you do, um, playback at 1.5x or even 2x uh, is a thing that you might want to consider. Um, you know, since you know, I'm certainly happy to upload it, um, but um, there isn't really any time uh, to edit it uh, to uh, take out all of the long uh, silences. All right, so what's uh, the best way to um, request uh, a new language? Um, so English Canada. Um, well, actually, let me go see. What it uh, affords. OK, well, um, Jennifer, if you refresh uh, on the project, um, you should now see an empty English CA uh, option. Um, so uh, let me know if it's uh, there for you. And actually, while I'm there, Just get to go and see if I can find any uh, pending moderation requests. Uh, and... All right, yeah, it looks like at the moment, uh, anybody uh, who's asked to work in a language in Launchpad uh, has uh, been approved uh, to do so. Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, well, can I share uh, my uh, command uh, history? Um, yeah, let's go see. <laughs> so looks like from about three six uh, three two one. Plus enough. All right, so something that's kind of Really, really messy, but right, now here's a pen, paste pen. <laughs> All right, and now I will saw that in RCA for you now, Michelle.
All right, uh, let me scroll back to see if there are any other questions. All right, looks like a nod. Um, and okay, thank you for your time, everybody. And also uh, thank you for putting up uh, with uh, a rather uh, an org uh, disorganized uh, presentation. So at this time, I'm going to stop screen sharing um, and give you one last minute for any final questions. Okay. And at this time, I'm also going to stop the recording.